Nicola Cairn Cross here, and I'm back to show you how to create your own custom GPT. And that, think of it as like an app, and you can either use it on your website, or you can link it to your chat bot on your website, or you can send people directly to it hosted on OpenAI. Why would you want such a thing? Well, if you watched the video yesterday, then you'll find out exactly why. So go and watch that if you haven't yet. But essentially, it's a way of distilling your knowledge and experience and making for a better user experience for people interacting with your website, um, how to get a sort of taste of how it would be to work with you. So it's absolutely fantastic for authors, trainers, coaches, people like that. But you have to set it up right. I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to use one of my books. In fact, I'm going to use two of my books. I've got one that's three quarters finished and one that was finished. And it's all about entrepreneurship. So I'm going to call my new app A Better Entrepreneur. And I want to get it into the App Store before the App Store goes live. So that'll be really exciting to be there when that happens with one or two um, apps. Enough of the waffle. Let's get on with it, shall we? OK, so when you first arrive um, in your chat GPT plus account, which is what you'll need, it's about uh, $20 a month to have one. And I think it's well worth it because not only do you get enhanced chat GPT for functionality for yourself, uh, but you actually get it attached to the Internet and all sorts of things so it can be updated regularly. Uh, but you, you get to create your own app. So you'll probably arrive in this screen, which is the chat GPT four screen. And if you go over to the left hand side, you can see the explore button. So I would click on that. And that's when you get to the place where you can see your recently used apps and also your own, any apps you've already created. And this is where you create a new app. So let's do that today. OK. Now, I have created a super prompt, which I'm going to show you now. It's the result of much experimentation and learning and watching videos of other people doing it. So what we've got is we've got um, the chat, the GPT embodying Nicola Cairncross's digital marketing expertise and aligned with the contents of the PDF books. Uh, let's say, let's change that to um, experience as a entrepreneur uh, expertise of coaching thousands of small business owners and aligned with the content of the PDF books at uh, 28 years of experience as an entrepreneur. More than that actually, but there you go. So it's telling it it it's telling the GPT that we're going to be um referring to these books and we're going to upload those in a moment. So here's the instructions that I've really if you want to take a screenshot of those, then that would be a good thing. Basically these are the ones that I've created over the last few weeks because I wanted to slow down the GPT. It's got a little bit of a tendency to get overexcited and over exuberant, as I call it. And I wanted it to slow down and um, ask for the user's name. I need to always ask one question first. Ask up to 10 clarifying questions, but don't start making suggestions until they've done. And um, also ask the user if there's one thing, one thing I need to know about you that would help me help to help you more effectively. OK, so we're going to copy and paste this instruction you don't have to have all this at the beginning you can actually develop it as you go along but i thought i might as well share it with you so you can see and at the end it's giving it's concluding with three suggestions which is come over to nicola's website i want to make a gpt who helps aspiring entrepreneurs and acts as a mentor and coach to those entrepreneurs and small business owners. So I'm not going to upload the other information just yet. No, I am not. The reason I'm doing this is I'm branding my book, my next book. And uh, so everything I do is around that at the moment. It's going to update over here. It's going to generate a profile picture, which I'm guaranteed to dislike. But I can always change it later. Hmm, it's not too hideous. E uh, nine one two three. This is where it's using Dull E, which is its sort of image creation software. Well, that's not too bad. 
teal as well. Yes, I, I like it. But now, anyway, <laughs> I didn't like the cream background. I was going to get it to change the cream background. It's already done that. So what specific topic should be especially knowledgeable about? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I'm going to use my instructions there. And I'm also going to attach my two books back to books over to a better entrepreneur. Here's a PDF of the largely nearly finished version. Okay, so Mindset Marketing and Money, Better Entrepreneur, and my marketing book. And I would think that would help. I can always upload the money books if I think that they're really important. Always begins interactions. Here we go. All of that. Let's see what it makes of this, shall we? Now it's updating the GP, GPT. That's going to take quite a while. So I'll cut out the boring waiting bits because it's got to absorb all the contents of the books. But there you go. It hasn't taken long, has it? It's ready for a test run. Feel free to try it out in the playground, which is a separate chat dialogue to the right. If there's any refinements you'd like me to make, just let me know what would you like me to do. Okay. So this is the actual thing at the moment. So what I want to do is I want to try and I want to get rid of some of these questions because it, if, if, it, if it if the user clicks any of these questions, it sends the GPT off on a different tangent than what I've outlined here. So I'm going to swap over to the configure tab and I'm going to go down here. Um, created by. Uh, mentor. Coach and podcast. Oh, author. Okay, I'm going down here, which is where the, um, the boxes are. So I'm just going to get rid of these ones. Start the conversation. Let's say hello. And I found that that gives you a better chance of the GPT following your instructions than than not. Okay. And just while we're here, by the way, you can um, enable web browsing, enable image making, and enabling. I just leave all those ticked as they are default. And then down here. So it's it's getting permission to use the conversation data in the GPT to improve their model. So overall, I don't see a problem with that. Okay, back to create. And let's go for it. So this is now going to be acting as a better entrepreneur GPT, and we'll see how it does. I should start by asking my name. Yes, we're going to be Hamish again. Oh, uh, how to track my cash flow. Right. Now, my main thing is um, that I want them to track cash flow weekly on a spreadsheet. So it's already suggesting something that I wouldn't have suggested. Yes, I've been told. Simple. It weekly. What do you think about that? I'm going to say Nicola told me so that it will go hopefully into its knowledge base. Okay, so it's going down, it's, it's going into detail about how it could do it, how the user could do it. Ooh, would you like a basic structure for setting up your cash flow spreadsheet? All right, go on then. Basic structure would be good. Excellent. I thoroughly approve. No, that's good. Now, what it should do is give me my three options. Hmm, it hasn't done that. Now, sometimes I've found it doesn't actually do what you tell it to until after you've saved it. So I'm going to try that in a minute. It says it's updating the GPT now. So I'm going to show you how to do that, and then I'm going to go off and use it as a another user would. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to save, and I'm going to click 
um, you can save as only you, you can save as only people with a link, or you can save as public. I'm going to save as public. And then I'm going to confirm it. And that should save all the new instructions. Then I'm going to go off in a different tab and use it as if I was a user, a public user. And there you go. It's created it. And I can actually click on it there. And it's still got the questions that I didn't want it to have. So we'll go back to it now. Uh, go down to there, go to my GPTs. And it'll be listed here. And I can go across to edit and go to configure again. And I'm going to go over to update and public and confirm. Now, where am I going to get the link from? View GPT, there we go. Or you can click there to copy the link. Oh, yeah, of course, because I'm signed into my account. And you'd have to have an account to be able to use it. That's the thing you need to tell people. Okay, so I guess. And... I'm just getting started. Now, remember, it's only supposed to do three suggestions before asking more questions. There we go. Nice. It's uh, Scots living abroad. Random Monkey Haggis. I have an Instagram account. And take photos of local scenery. Yes, I have a basic website. See, I like the way that it kept this questions really simple here um, because I said I was just getting started. So it's doing, it's following its instructions to not overwhelm the new user. So let's see what it says now. Scottish culture and traditions, deeper connection, featuring your haggis in these settings. <laughs> oh dear. Ensure your website is user-friendly, optimised for e-commerce, uniqueness of your haggis, content marketing, strategy to improve your website, search engine ranking, blog posts about Scottish cuisine, the history of haggis, how it's made, et cetera, et cetera. I want to get it to suggest a YouTube channel as well at some point. Right. Would you like any more suggestions on these points or are there other areas you're curious? Remember, you can always visit Nicola's website and download her book. Very good. Nice. Okay. If I make the haggis myself and have been thinking of filming myself, cooking it, what do you think? Video tips, excellent. Tell a story, quality production, call to action. And now it's suggesting that they visit my YouTube channel for more business insights. So I'm talking about this. Oh, I'm very thrilled with this. That's great. That's working just great. So anyway, I think just by seeing this, you're going to get a real good idea of what a custom GPT could do for your business. Um, I'm still working on working out how to set it up with a chat bot on my website. And you might be asking yourself why... Why would you want to do this? Why would you want to share your knowledge and experience? And the the thing is that no matter how much information you give people, they want personal support. That's what I found. You know, you can train people, you can put up endless videos, you can do all sorts of things. Um, but people have always got this feeling that they're different, they're special, they've got special, unique circumstances, or that their business is different and it's got unique circumstances. So they'll always want, for the people who could afford it, that will always want personal hand-holding. Now, whether you do that in a group or whether you do that on a one-to-one -one basis, it doesn't really matter. However you prefer to work. I love to work one-to-one. -one. I've got two one-to-one -one clients at the moment. Um, and I'm working with them on their branding, their personal branding online, their books, their websites, um, their social media plan of action. So I work right across the board with people one to one. I've also got the Clicks and Leads Academy where people can come and join up, where they can enjoy a community environment inside. Very familiar looking to you if you use any of the social media platforms. And um, you you can also get the benefit of talking to the other members as well as the training videos and then the once a week 
uh, do a once a week Q&A session live on Zoom so people can get personal advice there as well. So you, you decide how you want to deliver your expertise and then use the custom GPT not only to get you some um, traffic and attention on the app store when it launches, but also to attract people to your website, your, your YouTube channel, your social media accounts, wherever you want to send people. As you can see, you can actually train the bot to do that. And the final thing is I've already bought the uh, Better Entrepreneur URL for my book, and I'm going to be pointing it at my main book site when I've got one up and running. But in the meantime, I can point the URL to my chat GPT URL that it's given me. So I can actually direct people to it easy, easy enough. OK, so you might be wondering why you would give all your best stuff away, especially if you've got it in a book. Well, the point is that people can't absorb too much information at once. And by being there to answer their questions when they have their questions, when they've got their specific questions, you're building trust with them. You're establishing that you know what you're talking about and that you can answer their questions and you know that. And especially if you make it very plain that your custom GPT has been programmed using your book, your training materials, your PDFs, whatever it is you, you use um, with your customers or clients. You can never give people too much information. They will always want to work with the person one to one if they're the right kind of clients for that. So if I can help you at all, don't hesitate to ask your questions below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next video.